happy now uh, is an enjoyment for me and I'm really happy that I had the opportunity to check out TNA for the first time in several months and probably will end up making a habit of checking out TNA more often now that I know people like uh, Matt Hardy and Mickey James are being booked in TNA Wrestling along with Joni Lauer uh, who is working in a phenomenal program right now alongside Kurt Angle, uh, Jeff Jarrett and Karen Angle. They just recently competed in a mixed tag team match with Sha uh, Kurt Angle and China team together uh, for uh, what I believe was the first time ever as they took on uh, Jeff Jarrett and Karen Angle uh, in a storyline that has a real life angle uh, incorporated with it. Now coming up here in a future audio commentary I'll be expressing my thoughts and opinions on how TNA Wrestling are using a real life situation to promote a storyline and an angle uh, because I don't know whether or not to agree with it but coming up here in a future audio commentary for this radio program I'll be talking about the Kurt Angle, Jeff Jarrett, Karen Angle or Karen Jarrett whatever you want to call her the queen of the mountain and how I feel TNA Wrestling are taking advantage of a real life angle something similar uh, comes to mind when you think of that uh, the Edge, Matt Hardy, Lita situation from 2005, 2006 in WWE I'll be talking about that, the Queen of the Mountain storyline and, and Joni Lauer's involvement. Uh, we just talked here briefly on Matt Hardy, how I'm enjoying seeing him. Hopefully TNA Wrestling will eventually catapult him into the uh, title contention. Uh, I'd love to see Matt Hardy probably booked in a program against RVD or Sting uh, over the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, but I think it's going to take some time. Uh, it seems like Jeff Hardy was always the popular one of those two, and he was the one that was always getting booked uh, in the uh, championship matches while Matt Hardy kind of uh, sat, sat on the bench and had to watch it. So uh, hopefully he will, you know, be catapulted in the same direction Christian was back in 05 when he was there for about a month and he was already the TNA champion. And after that, after his inaugural run, went on to capture the TNA championship at least two more times in his TNA run uh, before going back to WWE. Um, and in Mickey James's case, uh, the first time that I had seen Mickey James in months, she was the TNA Knockouts champion, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. She had a phenomenal run for herself in WWE. In 2006, she made her WWE debut, and in her inaugural program, she was booked in a program with Trish Stratus, and that said a lot. Not too many divas come through the doors of WWE and are booked in their inaugural program against an athlete of the caliber of Trish Stratus. Uh, I really enjoyed enjoyed seeing her programs that she worked in WWE and the variety of talent uh, she had the opportunity to compete against. One of my favorite Mickey James matches uh, from WWE was the program she worked with uh, Beth Phoenix in the United Kingdom, which culminated with her winning the WWE Women's Championship courtesy of a, vict of a victory roll uh, she used on Beth Phoenix. That was one of my favorite Mickey James matches. And I turned on TNA Wrestling after not seeing Mickey James for several months. The only bit of news I would get about Mickey James was through going through her official website, uh, which I'll probably include with this audio commentary. I'll include both the Hardy Show and Mickey James official website for you to check out to uh, brief yourselves on what's going on with their careers. The only bit of information I would obtain about Mickey James's career uh, was through the occasional visit I would make to her website and read up on her band uh, that she was promoting outside of the ring. Uh, TNA Wrestling will also uh, probably allow her to promote her band, uh, something that WWE wasn't allowing her to do. Um, but I think that, you know, TNA Wrestling making her the TNA Knockouts Champion at least gives her something substantial to do. Uh, she's worked in a number of programs in TNA Wrestling. She even had the opportunity to work in a program with Madison Rain, better known on the Independents as Ashley Lane. I think Mickey James is a phenomenal TNA Knockout. She's up there with the Lacey Von Erichs, the Velvet Skies, and the Angelina Loves of the World. Um, you know, Mickey James has, has virtually done everything there is to do. She's kind of like a Michelle McCool. Uh, when it comes to a diva. She's been the women's champion several times. She's had phenomenal career highlights in the WWE and I think she felt like it was time for her to ask for her release or uh, do something different. She spent a great deal of her time away from WWE promoting her band and when she felt the time was right she showed up in TNA Wrestling, uh, was booked in uh, a variety of different programs and then eventually it all culminated with her winning the TNA Knockouts Championship. I think it's great 
uh, for TNA Wrestling to be bringing in talents like Mr. Anderson, who's doing a wonderful job for himself in TNA Wrestling right now. He's been booked in several TNA World Title programs. He's even had the opportunity to hold the TNA Championship. The only opportunity he really got for the World Title in WWE was one program he was booked in at a Royal Rumble. I believe that was in 06 or 07 uh, when he was booked in a World Championship match against Batista, and Batista basically got over. And now he's gone back to using his original OVW name as Mr. Anderson in TNA. I think that's wonderful. And I think that was probably the way WWE should have introduced him. The thing about WWE, and I think where the paranoia is being created uh, from Vince McMahon and the WWE agents, is the fact that they're letting the WWE talent go a little bit too early into the uh, early stages of their career. And TNA Wrestling is taking advantage and picking up the ball where WWE are always dropping it. Uh, they've really picked up the ball with talents like Matt Hardy, Mickey James, and Mr. Anderson, and they are doing more with their careers, and I think that uh, the people that were in WWE are finding some semblance of happiness, something that was lost, uh, other th either through a release or something going on in their lives personally. Uh, a wrestler one a long time ago said this in an interview on WWE.com. It was either on WWE.com or a radio show um, I had heard. I, I don't think it was on WWE.com. It probably was on a radio show. Everybody, and he said this, everybody who is working with TNA are happy again. And I, I think I agree with him to a certain extent. Whoever it was, I can't remember who it was, uh, when he said that everyone who's working for TNA are happy again. And I think that people like Mickey James and, and, and Matt Hardy and Mr. Anderson are perfect examples of that. Um, and, and really exemplify what TNA Wrestling is really all about. It is about restoring uh, happiness that once was for these talents. You know, they were happy to be involved with WWE and finding ways to get booked in the main events. Now they're still finding ways to be booked in the main events, uh, but they're, you know, getting back their happiness while they're being booked in the main events. Uh, you know, Tommy Dreamer is a perfect example of that, his involvement with the EV2 in TNA Wrestling. The only thing WWE were using him for was an ECW original uh, and gave him the belt just to make the ECW brand look good for several months before they eventually released him. I think that Tommy Dreamer is a perfect example of somebody who has now found some semblance of happiness that was lost when he was working for WWE. I think he lost his happiness when the original ECW had lost its direction. And I think he regained it uh, through his involvement with EV2 and uh, TNA's uh, attempt to reincarnate what was of ECW. I think the only bit of life that's left for ECW fans is in TNA Wrestling and their EV2 angle, which I'm surprised is still around. Now this was the first time I had the opportunity to check out TNA in several months. No doubt I'll be checking it out uh, on occasion when I get the opportunity to. I don't follow them as much as I do WWE, but I still make time to comment on some of the issues and angles that are being uh, brought forth by TNA Wrestling. I really like the idea of how they incorporated Joni Lauer into the TNA storylines and the whole Karen Jarrett and uh, Jeff Jarrett angle. This is the first time uh, fans of China are actually having the opportunity to see her uh, perform inside of the ring in several years. The only bit of news I had about China was her uh, ongoing rehab that uh, MTV and a number of other reality television networks were profiling. Uh, and her involvement in intermingling with other celebrities. Uh, but it's nice to see Joni Lauer back, and it's really nice to see Matt Hardy and Mickey James having something done with their careers. I don't think China needs the push as much as Mickey James or Matt Hardy does. Um, but it's really sad when you look back on a wrestler's career. You take Matt Hardy, for example, and the only uh, bit of success he really had for himself was in TNA Wrestling and the couple of title runs he had in WWE as the Cruiserweight Champion or one half of the Tag Team Champion. I think that uh, you know Matt Hardy needs to push more than Jeff Hardy. I don't know why the professional wrestling industry always focuses the majority of the attention when it comes to the Hardy Boys on Jeff Hardy. Maybe it's because uh, WWE looked at it in terms of popularity. Jeff Hardy was obviously the more popular of the two when it came to the female demographic, and he received the blunt of the push. While Matt Hardy was being booked in cruiserweight championship programs with Rey Mysterio, uh, which did him a world of good, uh, but really, you know, he was really being gypped out and getting the shitty end of the stick, for uh, lack of a better word, uh, being fucked around all the time, and, uh, you know, at least... Uh, 
TNA Wrestling is trying to do something with his career, and I hope it amounts to something. Uh, as it relates to Mickey James and Matt Hardy signing deals with TNA Wrestling, I had read a few spoilers on ProWrestling.com about them signing with TNA Wrestling, but I wasn't really following up uh, on the uh, signings of WWE superstars to TNA Wrestling, and I was absolutely overwhelmed uh, to know that people like Matt Hardy and Mickey James and Mr. Anderson and even RVD, uh, who at one point in 2006 was the WWE Champion, uh, are being booked in Tina Wrestling and having something done with their career. When you turn on Tina Wrestling and you see RVD uh, being booked in the main events at pay-per-views for Tina Wrestling, a guy I interviewed uh, back here on HW Entertainment several years ago, uh, talking about how he had no plans of going to TNA Wrestling at that particular point in time. It is absolutely overwhelming and heartwarming to know uh, that TNA Wrestling are finding different things for these guys to do, something that WWE were unable to do. And like I said before, going back to what I previously said here for this week's audio commentary, I think that's where the majority of the paranoia lies when it comes to Vince McMahon and the WWE agents and creative team. They're realizing that TNA Wrestling are capitalizing on where they're dropping the ball. Uh, they took Mr. Anderson and made him a world champion, something WWE didn't do. They're making Mickey James a bigger star than she ever was in WWE, and they're making Matt Hardy something that he didn't amount to in WWE. I mean, what all we saw Matt Hardy in WWE were little programs uh, that were helping people like Rey Mysterio back in 03 get over, and people like Drew McIntyre, somebody that nobody has ever heard tell of get over. And all we really saw of Matt Hardy following his release was his involvement on thehardyshow.com, a link that I'll throw up here in our radio form for you to check out along with Pinky James's website, and a couple of YouTube videos he used to post uh, on his YouTube channel. You can find that by going to youtube.com, just as you can our YouTube channel. My YouTube channel name is Jonathan Clark 22 Leave your opinions on the signing of Mickey James, Joni Lauer, and Matt Hardy, and a variety of other former WWE talents to TNA in some of our YouTube videos. You can also shoot us an email at 